Hello, I'm Rosie Hardy. This is Rosie Hardy Gardening. And if you like the videos that we produce, please do subscribe to the channel. This is the Q&A for the beginning of September. Got a lot of questions this time, so let's get through them. Hi Rosie, could you give me your top tips for balancing garden aesthetics and being wildlife friendly? I know we need to stop tidying, allowing insects over winter. And how do you keep the garden looking good? Well, everyone has got a different idea really about what aesthetics and how tidy a garden should look. So you need to make it possible for you to enjoy the garden and not feel that it's a little bit untidy. The easiest way to do that is if you have lawn and grass, edge up the grass. As soon as you get the edges done and neat and tidy, everything else looks tidy. That's one tip. And the other thing I've always said, do spring clean in a garden. So basically leave all the cutting down and the tidying up until the spring because that just gives the plants a rest and it means that the insects can overwinter well. Your plants have all the protection they need from the top growth. Hope that helps. Somebody would like to add some structural height to their borders um, without restricting the size and being able to see through and is wanting small trees or shrubs that they could perhaps cloud prune or lollipop and what would I recommend? So I would always say things which are nice and good for that um, and also give you some winter interest are things like Osmanthus burkwoodii, that works really well, uh, Ligustrum japonicum, um, Salix capsii is a lovely willowy willow that is very good that you can keep in that sort of way. And then things like crab apples, Malus species, the small crab apples, they are easy to grow like that. And some of the crotagus as well, so the hawthorns, all of those you can manipulate and prune and keep to a size that you want. I have a raised flower bed that has daffodils, tulips and Spanish bluebells. I want to add more bulbs to the planting that will flower later and extend the season, as well as add more soil because it's got eroded over the years. Can I add more dirt and bulbs on top of the current planting or would that rot everything? Do I have to completely dig it all up and replant? Okay, so this will really depend on the depth of soil that you've got left in your raised bed, but I would say yes, you can add on top, but sometimes it is a good idea to just have a restart and lift the whole lot up, think about what you're going to be putting in, add in new new compost because at the end soil because at the end of the day that's what you need to do you need to raise your level up and then you can rearrange it in a better way this one relates to an ivy hedge uh, which has grown between conifers in a london garden and the height and width need reducing now obviously ivy is very good for the wildlife etc so this is a question about when does the person actually do the trimming up of the ivy i would say you probably need to do two prunings and I would do a midsummer one because in the midsummer the nesting birds have finished it's not in full flower for all of the insects so therefore you want to be bringing the height down a bit in the summer and taking the sides in and then maybe middle of the winter when all of that flowering has finished so before you get the nesting birds in is another time to do that pruning but i would pr prefer the midsummer time uh, and that will help you a lot um this one is about hellebores when do you divide them um so hellebores don't need dividing as often as other herbaceous perennials and some of them don't like dividing at all but if you want to divide them do it probably every five years and that will help um, but just they don't like a lot of disturbance so lift the whole clump out and then look at it and divide a small bit off put the old bigger clump back in and then nurse the younger clump to be able to make it a better plant for you somebody's got a standard rose which um, the graft it died up off above the graft and then the lower bit grew which was the uh, graft area and it has been great uh, but now it's got yellow leaves and a bit of black spot is it too late in the season to feed it I reckon with something like that you need to give it a good prune so that you get rid of the weak stems 
and then give it a feed. It's never too late in the season. It will need a feed now. Um, we're in September. It's still going to be doing a little bit of growing and then give it a good feed in the spring and give it another spring prune and that will really help. Somebody who's gone a bit mad with Hellenium managed to find a whole load um, cheap on a clearance and it's a variety called Heyday and they thought it was going to be dwarf like and um, sassy but unfortunately it's a bit bigger. I wanted to know if they could, when to lift and move it and the answer is now we're getting to those autumn months this is the time to be moving it. So if it has finished flowering, give it a chop back, probably down to about 30 centimeters, one foot, that will be fine. Lift it, move it now. It will get settled in because the soil is still warm and you will get a good uh, chance for it to reestablish itself and it will look better next year. Agapanthus, um, somebody's had them in the ground. They bought them three years ago. This is the first year they haven't flowered. Wanted to know whether to divide them. Um, yes, you can divide them, but I would divide them in the spring. I would also give them a bit of food, a high potash feed. So something like sulfate of potash now would be good. And then divide them in the spring and also feed them in the spring. Also another one about division and this is about hostas and how often in terms of years should you divide a hosta. Now hostas always look better when they're much more mature plants. The older they are, the bigger they are, the better they look. And yes, if you're growing them in containers, they may be getting big in the container, but move them into a bigger container. They look really good. Probably every six years is about the time that you should be dividing a hosta um, because they've got plenty of nodes there. You can divide in the autumn, but it is better to divide in the spring when you can see those lovely pointed buds coming up and they're about the thickness of your finger. Lift them, divide them then because they are actively growing and they should do far better for you. Let's see what else we've got. Somebody's got a mature fig tree and it produced loads of figs last year. Um, Neighbours have asked them to cut it lower because it's shading their garden. So went and uh, cut it back in February this year, hasn't produced any figs. Now figs can be a little bit fickle. Um, two prunings a year is advised, um, but February is too early. You've got to wait until the frosts have finished, which means you aren't pruning in the spring until probably end of March, beginning of April. And then you also give them another pruning after they've finished um, fruiting in the late summer. So hopefully that will help you. So you need to change the timings of when you actually are pruning the fig. Somebody here um, has got some, oh, is interested in the fact that we did a lot of breeding and wants to know whether it takes a lot of time, a lot of cost, etc. Um, this is something that is, is a difficult one to answer from the point of view that the breeding that we have done here on the nursery has been done by open pollination. That means that we are standing two plants together. We are allowing both of those parent plants to be pollinated openly. We're taking them away from anything else. And then we are collecting the seed from those two parents. Sometimes one parent will be better at producing seed than the other. We note which is which. We then set all the seed, we grow up the plants, we then study them over the first year, discard a whole mass of them, so we discard them at a very small stage, then we grow on some more, we'll look at those, assess them, maybe nothing will happen. So this can take three, four, five years to assess seedlings. In the meantime, we're still doing the, uh, allowing them to cross and getting new ones along the line. So what it takes is time, it can take a bit of compost, um, and an area to grow those plants on. If you are going to the breeding stages where you are actually um, demascalizing or otherwise on a plant and you are taking away the anthers and you are adding pollen to them, that is a completely different um, type of breeding and that takes a lot more effort and you need to be covering over plant material with plastic bags or um, which is perforated so that insects can't get in and what you've done in the way of crossing is kept sterile from anything else and then you take those on but again it's still a process of does that work two three years down the line are those plants any good so it is a long process hello rosie each year i buy muscari americum um, and it 
you know, it comes in little pots, they look lovely. Then when I put them in the garden next year, they come up and the leaves are huge. Am I doing anything wrong? Well, this is all to do with nutrition and water. So when they're grown in a container, they are probably not um, given as much nitrogen. Um, so they say the leaf stays smaller, the flowers come up, they will be grown under light conditions and then they will be put outside. Once they go into the ground, they come back to more what their natural growth habit is, and that is to produce quite a bit of foliage. That foliage usually collapses as the flowers come up. But what you need to do is make sure that they don't get high nitrogen feed. So don't put them anywhere where they are um, mulched, for instance, because that will just increase a lot of leaf growth. So put them in poorer areas and then you should have better foliage. If you find the foliage is too much, then thin out a little bit. It won't cause them any harm. Where have I got to now? Okay, uh, Rosemary, do I cut old flower heads off my Rudbeckia herbston? Rudbeckia herbston is the really tall Rudbeckia, beautiful back of border. And really, no, it doesn't make any difference if you deadhead that um, to encourage more flower. It will flower freely without you needing to worry. And I would always say, yes, leave those old heads up there until they collapse and cut them back in the spring. I've sown biennials in trays, foxgloves, honesty, sweet williams and wallflowers. Should I plant them in the garden or pot them on and overwinter them in a cold frame and plant in the spring? I would suggest that you plant half of them out in the borders now and get them to establish and then put half of them in containers so that should there be a hard winter and you lose one or two, you have got reserves to put in where you want them. If you end up with too many in small pots, you can give them away to your local school or to a local garden club who will be really happy to distribute them around other places. Or if you've got lots of friends, you can give them those as well. Someone else here would like um, something in a pot for colour, something tall for the autumn. Well, planting up something now tall for the autumn is a little bit late. You should have thought about it a little bit earlier. But for autumn colour, something tall, then, you know, it is difficult because I don't know whether you want to keep it in that container uh, or then put it into the ground or you're wanting something that is just literally giving you colour now. Late uh, autumn coloured perennials um, are good, such as the Rudbeckias. Some of the Michaelmas will do really well in containers and go right the way through. So hopefully that gives you some ideas. Thank you very much for watching and please do subscribe to the channel.